Can you think of a creepier name for something than Black Death? Yeah, we couldn't either. The Black Death was no joke, and today we take you into a deep dive on why the Black Death was so deadly. As it turns out, the pandemic that earned the name Black Death definitely deserved the title. The plague, which it is also known by, was one of the most devastating bacterial outbreaks in human history, taking more lives than any war or other known plagues at the time that spread through Asia and Europe in the 1300s. It recurred for 500 years after that and took the lives of an estimated 60% of the European population, wiping out entire towns and causing massive effects on the region's culture and economy. In some locations, it was reported that there weren't enough survivors left to bury the dead. The name Black Death came from one of the disease's most common symptoms, swollen lymph nodes that became blackened after the bacteria entered the skin. Needless to say, it was pretty awful. So where did this horrifying plague come from and how did it become so devastating? Today on Feed My Curiosity, we're going to look at what life was like as the Black Death was on its path of destruction, and what made it so, well, deadly. The Black Death is widely known for ravaging Europe, but it actually is thought to have originated in Asia. Details of the origins of the disease are scarce, but it could have traveled on the Silk Road or by ship, spreading through Asian countries like China, India, Persia, Syria, and Egypt in the 1340s. Europeans even heard rumors of the outbreak before it hit their shores, but really had no idea what was really in store. The plague traveled across the Mediterranean Mediterranean Sea and landed at various European ports in the late 1340s, unleashing the terror we know today. The disease caused dreadful symptoms, which included swelling in the groin and armpits, fever, chills, vomiting, diarrhea, aches and pains, and eventually, you guessed it, death. So overall, not a great time. There are no definitive numbers of deaths from the plague, but most agree that around 25 million died in Europe alone, with millions more in the surrounding areas. The plague had drastic effects on the culture of the time, particularly in the economy, as it caused labor shortages and a new fear of traveling for trade, which slowed down commerce. In Western Europe, it took until the early 1500s for the population to return to its numbers before the plague struck. Interestingly, due to Europe's largely agrarian economy at the time and massive shortage of labor following the outbreak, conditions actually improved for surviving workers. With less people came higher wages, which allowed for a heightened standard of living and easier social mobility. As laborers' lives improved, they began to question the structure of their society, which led to the decline of the feudal system. Some even believe that these factors helped bring about the Renaissance that later swept the continent and greatly impacted human history. The labor shortage from the plague is also said to have jumpstarted certain innovations in technologies to make up for the smaller population. So I guess the Black Death wasn't all bad? We can think that now, but it would have been pretty difficult to convince someone at the time. You may still be asking yourself, what was this disease and how did it spread so far so quickly? The Black Death is now known to come from a bacillus, or germ, called Jersina pestis, which is actually a mutant variety of bacteria. So that's fun. Once it finds a host, it disables their immune system and then it begins to multiply and so begins the plague. The Black Death spread so intensely at the time because the bacterium is extremely contagious and thrived in the less than hygienic conditions of the trade ships and cities. The plague spread both through the air as well as through infected fleas and rats. While it makes sense that big trade ships would be a natural home for rats, it's just a little harder to imagine just how unsanitary many cities were at the time, which played a large role in the plague's takeover. For example, it was common practice at the time to dump sewage out of people's windows and into the streets. That alone could have caused diseases to spread, but many people also own pigs and other animals that roam the streets, possibly carrying bacteria with them. People also often took water from rivers and other natural sources that could have easily been contaminated. So with that somewhat revolting image of city life in the 1300s, it's a little less surprising that such a strong germ was able to spread so effectively. It was brought from port to port on ships, and then nature took care of the rest. One of the most terrifying facts about the Black Death, you know, other than the black boils that oozed blood and pus, is that it still exists exists in various parts of the world today. Most of the confirmed cases are found in Africa, but other countries include the United States, China, India, Vietnam, and Mongolia. The good news is that nowadays, most cases are treatable if given the right antibiotics in time. So I guess we all don't have to start wearing hazmat suits to walk down the street. And let's hope it doesn't take another epidemic to increase technological innovations and foster a more egalitarian society. We can do that without killing off tens of millions of people, right? If you like what you watched or have any more suggestions, hit like and comment below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button too. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next time on Feed My Curiosity.